Okay, we just finished setting up our Ultimate VirtualBox test lab, and now it's kind of just a little bonus video tutorial thing here where we're going to be setting up um, remote desktop access to these virtual machines on the internal network, and then any future ones as well, uh, client machines perhaps, uh, from our host machine here, because I may want to remote desktop into them to work on them or whatever. So. Um, first thing we're going to do here is we got PFSense running. We also have DC1 running. So we're going to connect to DC1 here. And you have to bear with me. I am on vacation here in San Diego. We're staying at the Hard Rock Hotel this week. And um, the connection speed isn't the fastest. So, you know, when you see me moving through the different screens, it may look a little slow. And it is. So I apologize. But um, it should still work fine for what we need to do. What we're first going to do is in our DC1, we need to um, click on local server in our server manager dashboard. And we need to look at the remote desktop option right here. It's currently disabled by default. So we'll click that. What I'm going to do is select allow remote connections and just hit OK. And I'm going to uncheck the allow connections um, re regarding the network level authentication. I'm going to hit OK. And now this should switch if we refresh it to enabled it's enabled now so now our server is uh, prepared to be connected via remote desktop now i just did this initially just to show you but what we'll eventually do is set up a group policy that enables this by default so you don't have to go through these uh, through each individual server and computer uh, to enable this so what i'm going to do is minimize that and now we need to web into PFSense box. So I'm, I'm already connected here. And you can see our WAN connection is 10.2.0.199 and our LAN connection is 192.168.1.1. So essentially what we want to do is we need to port forward certain port numbers associated with each server to be forwarded from this WAN port to the specific IP address for that server on the LAN port. So there's a couple things we need to do. First, let's go ahead and go into system and run the setup wizard. By default, PFSense blocks private networks from being able to port forward into our internal network here. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit next, hit next again, next again, and configure WAN interface. We're gonna to scroll to the bottom here. We're gonna uncheck the block RFC 1918 private networks. And then we're gonna hit next, next, next and reload. So now that that's done, what we need to do is actually set up a port forward. Now to do that, we're going to click on firewall, NAT, and you can see we don't have any NAT rules right now, no port forwarding is going on. So we're going to hit the little plus sign on the right. There's only a few things we need to change in this screen here. Scroll down. On this destination, I'm going to switch the type from network to just any. You, you may not actually need to do that. No, I think you do. Otherwise, it's going to complain that there's no address in there. Um, destination port range. We're just going to fill in the from. Now, each server, we're just going to give it a port number. And since the default port number is 3389, I'm going to just start at 3395. So I'm going to type 3395. Now, it's going to be for DC1. And then redirect target IP, we need to put the IP address of the server we want to connect to. DC1 is 192.168.1.10. And the redirect target port, you can either type 3389 since that's the default, or we're just going to select MSRDP. Okay, so essentially what PFSense is going to do is say, hey, anything coming in on port 3395, I'm going to forward it to this server on the... Microsoft default 3389 port. Now this makes it handy because then you don't have to go into each server and client machine and set up a specific port number instead of the 3389. It's just going to, PFSense is going to handle that for us. Now description, I'm going to put RDP to DC underscore one. I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to go ahead and save it. And then up here we're going to apply the changes. And hit close. Now, let's see what happens from our host machine. If I come down here, and we're going to type in the WAN IP address of that PFSense box, which was 10.2.0.199 colon to specify a port number, which is at 3395. And that should get us to 
DC1. And there we go, we have the uh, username field. That means it's it's connected and it's looking for authentication. So I'm gonna, I think it was administrator for the default. Um, and then password. First time it connects, it's saying, hey, certificate error, that's fine. Get a hit yes. We'll see if we can connect here. There you have it. Now we're connected to the console session of uh, DC1. And if I minimize that, you can see on the console, such as if you're looking at it from a screen, it is currently locked um, because it is logged in via RDP. So essentially with DC2, you're going to do the same thing. You'll just connect to DC2, enable RDP, and then create, we'll go back here, create a nether port forward with maybe 3396. And then just point it to that server's IP address. Pretty simple. Now if you want to get pretty crazy about it and want to connect to these things from outside, such as like right now, I'm outside my home network, but I'm remoted into my host machine here. But if I wanted to just connect directly to these things, you would just have to set up a port forward on your home router's uh, port forwarding section. And essentially you would give it the WAN IP destination of, or you would give it the destination of the WAN IP on your PFSense box with that specific port number. And then PFSense will take that and whenever you try to connect through that port number, um, your home router is going to send that information over to PFSense. PFSense is going to see it and go, oh, okay, you want to connect to DC1 on port 3395.